again to another Java short tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show the third and last method to attach an action listener to a button which is via inheritance of the action listener okay and again I'm gonna do this based on a um, previous example so again I'm gonna use the four buttons in a text field code okay in my previous tutorials I have shown how to implement an action listener via a internal class with a name and how to do this via a internal class which is anonymous and therefore has no name so like I said in this tutorial I'm going to show it how to do this uh, using inheritance okay so uh, this one is is quite radically different uh, than the other approaches uh, even though it starts in the same way um, in my previous examples I've created a class that uh, implements action listener or done the same thing for a anonymous class in this particular example uh, the JFrame itself the main application class is going to implement the action listener interface so okay you have to import it and then of course um, I am forced to add the unimplemented method, which is the action performed method. Okay, I'm going to shift this action performed method uh, to above my main method simply because I prefer it to be there. So inside here, like with all the other examples I've done, I'm going to write the code. Um, I'm going to write the code that has to be executed when uh, the action listener is triggered or a button is pressed so in this particular case um, again I'm gonna put a piece of text inside the text field so this dot jtf number dot set text um, a button has been pressed there we go so now if I want to attach this action listener and this class itself is now an action listener to a button how do I do that? Well, say for example, if I go to the plus button, I say this dot jbtn plus dot add action listener, uh, not add ancestor listener, add action listener, and since uh, this class itself is the action listener that is going to be attached, I'm simply going to say this okay I can do the exact same thing for the minus button so this dot jbtn minus add action listener and add this class itself as the action listener so when either one of these two buttons is pressed the action performed method will trigger let me show you that so plus button and the minus button even though the text is identical uh, I assure you both are working and this also straight away highlights the problem with this approach well it's not really a problem because we can solve it but basically I have one action performed for all my buttons as a matter of fact um, I can actually add this to uh, all the other buttons I have as well which I will do right now so I'm gonna add it to the uh, multiply button and I'm going to add it to the divide button as well So there we go, and then all those four buttons are doing essentially this, the same thing. But that's something we don't want to happen inside a program, so that's actually the problem that I wanted to uh, raise, uh, make you aware of, and of course we're going to solve it. Basically I want all my four buttons to do a different thing, but they are all using the same action listener, which is the class itself. So how do we solve that? Well, fortunately, the action performed method has a uh, parameter object called action event and the action event um, contains information about uh, everything related to the action that has been triggered uh, including uh, which button triggered it so how do we do that we will use from the action event object or e we will use the get source method to check which button is pressed so how do we do that well very simple if statement 
if e.getSource equals, and then uh, the name of my button, so this.jbtm plus, what we will do then is we will say uh, plus button has been pressed. Else if e.getSource equals this.jbtn uh, minus then of course we want something else to happen so the minus button has been pressed and we can basically do this for the other buttons as well so just copying the code so if I want to if it's the uh, divide button that has been pressed we say it's the divide button and lastly if it's the multiply button I will simply say uh, multiply button has been pressed so there you go you I have a series of if else if statements and, and the last one could actually also be an else statement um, because all the other ones are ruled out um, that checks if it's a plus button, uh, indicate plus, if else if it's the minus button, indicate minus, else if it's the divide button, indicate the divide button, and if it's neither one of those three, it must be the multiply button. So let's see if that works. Okay, so we have the plus button, the minus button, the divide button, and the multiply button. So, completely correct. Alright, so that's how you implement multiple buttons uh, using uh, inheritance and by and therefore making the class itself uh, the action listener. So that's all for this example. See you next time. Mm -hmm.